Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the choir room here at Christ Church in downtown Charleston, West Virginia. My name is David Donathan, and I'm the Minister of Music here, and it is my joy to be with you on this beautiful, beautiful day. Isn't it so great to finally see the sun after about a week of gloom? It doesn't matter to me that it's cold. Just the fact that the sun is out and everything is turning green is just a wonderful thing to behold. And I'm so thankful that you have taken a couple minutes today to join me for this midweek devotion. The song I was just playing is found in our supplement, The Faith We Sing, and it's entitled Jesus Name Above All Names. Now, it's not necessarily a new song. It is not a, a contemporary Christian song, per se, but yet it is more contemporary than some of the other songs that we sing um, here in the worship life at Christ Church. It just depends on what you want to call contemporary. This particular song was written in 1974 by a woman by the name of Nadia Hearn. Now, Nadia actually lived in New Zealand, and uh, the way that this particular song came to be was kind of interesting. Um, I'm going to be telling you the story of this song from this book that I have used before. It's entitled, I Could Sing of Your Love Forever, The Stories of More Contemporary Christian Songs. Contemporary being uh, a term we could use for songs that have been written maybe in my lifetime, maybe in your lifetime. It would be something that would be a little more contemporary, I guess. Like I said, this one was written in 1974 uh, when Nadia was living in um, New Zealand. And she tells this story about how this song came to be. And she was fascinated with the different names that people use for Jesus Christ. And the scripture that she mentions in this particular devotion comes to us from Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, which is actually from the Christmas story. But it says here, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now, as I mentioned, Nadia was fascinated by the many different names that people would use for Jesus Christ. And so she goes on to tell the story about how in New Zealand they have a main living quarters and then they have an area that they call the wash house which is a small house behind the larger house. And that was the house where they do all of their washing of their clothes and their personal bathing and so forth. So she was out in the wash house one day and she had her list of names of, of Jesus that she had pulled from reading the Bible. Now just think about it. You know, how many names do we have for Jesus? You know, there's wonderful counselor. There's the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel. The names just go on and on and on. And this fascinated her as how many as to how many names there could be for Jesus Christ. So she had this slip of paper that she took with her out to the wash house in case another name for Jesus came into her mind. And while she was there doing the laundry that day, the spirit inspired her with this particular song. It's only eight measures long. It's more a chorus than it is really a full-fledged song. It takes 30 seconds to sing this song all the way through. But here's the story of how it came to be. While I was doing the washing, the Lord just gave me the first line of this song. Jesus, name above all names. I just started it and carried on singing. I sang the whole song just as you sing it today. I just opened my mouth and all of the words came out, the pitches and everything. I just sang. So I thought, well, I'll write it down. The Lord said, yes. So I left the washing and went down into the little sitting room, found a key on the piano that was just right and worked it out on manuscript paper. I said, Lord, is that okay? Is it all right, just like that? Yes, the Lord said, it was all right. That was all I wrote. And then I went back to the washing. It was just that simple. 
It was a straight out lead from the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. I can't say I thought about it or I thought about that. I just started on Jesus name above all names and it carried on all by itself. Soon thereafter, the song was sung in the Dias Church, a new life church there in Palmston, North, New Zealand. She didn't remember who sang it, but I guess that it was someone who was present in her congregation. Visitors from other parts of her country who attended the service took the song to their churches. Missionaries began to carry it overseas where it quickly became a favorite. Soon it was being sung in several nations. Nadia reported, I have, I've had all sorts of people write to me asking that I add three more verses. And I thought, well, if the Lord had wanted three more verses, he would have given them to me then. All, all that needed to be said was the spirit impressed on me that it was to be sung as a love song. It's all about Jesus. You're supposed to sing it softly, slowly, reverently. That's what he wanted. So something as simple as this particular song has changed lives all around the world. And that's something that I wanted to focus on today is the idea that no matter what small task you do in the name of the Lord, it will always be a task well worth the time and the effort. It doesn't matter how small it is. Like I'd mentioned, this is the only song that Nadia has ever had in print. She wrote maybe only one. It's a measure song, and it is absolutely one of the most meaningful songs that we have in our worship supplement today. So it doesn't matter how big or how small the task is. If you are doing the task in the name of God, it will always yield positive results. Now here's another little story that I want to share with you. It is about uh, the building of a great cathedral. And this is just a, another little story that kind of brings our point to mind today. We are so concerned about the kind of jobs God gives us. So why do we worry about them so much? Yet Christians who attend to details of these little jobs make valuable contributions to the ministry of Jesus Christ. We must not become weary doing the little things because in God's eyes, they are all important. And here's the story. As construction began on a magnificent cathedral, the archbishop in charge promised a large reward to the person who made the most important contribution to finishing the sanctuary. As the building went up, people speculated about who would win the prize. The architect, the contractor, the artisan skilled in gold, iron, brass, and glass, perhaps the carpenter assigned to the detailed grill work. Because each workman did his best, the completed church was a masterpiece. When the moment came to announce the winner, everyone was surprised. It was given to an old, poorly dressed peasant woman. What had she done? Every day she had faithfully carried hay to the ox that pulled the marble for the stone cutters to build the cathedral from the ground up. If it's done for the Lord, there is no such thing as a small task. So keep that in mind as we move through this week and these days ahead. No, there, is, there are no small tasks when it comes to the name of the Lord. Maybe you're trying to figure out something you could do for your neighbor. You could do something for your church. Whatever it is, if you do it in the name of the Lord, it is no small task because it helps further the kingdom. This little song that I sang for you today, or I'll sing for you here in a minute, but I played eight measures long, takes 30 seconds to sing it. It's just a little song, but it has changed lives all around the world for almost 45 years. It's, it's amazing. 
that something this little and this simple can change the life. So as you go through this day and, and through this week, think about what little things you can do to help further the kingdom of God. And if you know this song, I invite you to sing it with me. Very, very few lyrics. I'll sing it a couple times and you can maybe pick it up. this week. Keep in mind that no task, if done in the name of the Lord, is ever too small. Let's have a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you so much for this absolutely beautiful day, and we thank you for making it a part of our life this day. We thank you for the beauty that is unfolding all around us. And as we move through this day and this week, help us to look for ways that we can be your light and your love in the world. No small task, if done in your name, is ever a small task to you. So be with us and help us to continue to be your light and your love. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everybody. I will see you again in two weeks. I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.